This is problem 21 from the 2012 AP Calculus multiple choice set. Non-calculator question tells us that the line y equals 5 is a horizontal asymptote to the graph of which of the following functions. So what you have to realize right away about this particular problem is that a line is a horizontal asymptote of a function only if one of two things happen, and for a lot of functions both actually happen, but either the limit as x approaches infinity on that function has to equal 5, so the y value, the answer to the limit, way over on the right edge of the graph when x is really, really big, levels off at a value of 5, and or the y value, the answer to the limit, way over at the left edge of the graph, right, x would be approaching infinity, pushes us to the left edge of the graph, uh, also the y value levels off at 5. Uh, the asymptote can be at either edge of the graph or at both edges of the graph. And so if you think about putting infinity in place of these x's here, this one can be ruled out right away, right? Putting infinity in place of this x, 5 times infinity is infinity. Our graph goes up off the coordinate plane uh, over to the right edge of the graph, doesn't level off at a y value 5. So we can eliminate that one right away. This one's also pretty easy to eliminate, 1 divided by infinity. 1 divided by infinity is 0. This graph does have a horizontal asymptote, but it's y equals 0, not y equals 5. Um, this one here is probably the next easiest one to eliminate because if you look at putting infinity here and putting infinity here, sine of 5 times infinity is sine of infinity. Now, sine of infinity in isolation is something that does not have a limit that exists. But what we do know is we do know that the sine of infinity is between negative negative 1 and 1. The sine function always has a value between negative 1 and 1. So if we have a value between negative 1 and 1 and we divide by infinity, we might have a negative fraction, we might have a positive fraction, but the absolute value of that fraction is going to be really close to 0. Uh, you can actually work that limit out and develop a little proof of it by using the squeeze theorem, but in this case we just need to rule it out as being something that has a limit of 5 as we approach infinity. So the last two that we're down to here are choice D and choice E. Um, if you look at what I've done with option E, I've worked out the limit two different ways. Here I did it with L'Hopital's rule. Here I did it with a trick that you've probably relied on at the beginning of your calculus course and then probably moved off of a little bit later. But we're approaching infinity. We've got a polynomial divided by a polynomial. The highest power of x in the denominator is x squared. So if I divide all terms of that limit by x squared, which is essentially multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x squared, you end up having some cancellation happen. These cancel with each other, and you're just left with 20. Uh, this x and one of these x's are going to be able to divide out, and you're left with 1 over x. No simplification happens with this x squared divided by x squared is 1, so you can get rid of those, and you're just left with that coefficient of 4. Putting infinity here, putting infinity here, gives us 20 minus a fraction that's tending to 0 over 1 over infinity, so that's also a fraction that's tending to 0, plus 4, so it really ends up being 20 minus 0 over 0 plus 4, that does equal 5. I worked it out with L'Hopital's rule at the bottom of the screen. I got the answer of 5 there as well. If you do either of those things with this limit, what you're going to get is you're going to get negative 5. Therefore, we can rule that one out, and we are going to side with choice E.